the 10 pros and cons of living in Utah. Hi, I'm Becca Summers, your Utah realtor, and today we're gonna to talk about pros and cons of living in Utah. And I have 10 for each category, so stay till the end to find out the cons. Now, I grew up in Utah, lived here my whole life, so I think it's a pretty great state, but I've learned over the years what isn't so great about the state. So, let's jump right into it. The first pro is our ski resorts. We are known for our world-class ski resorts, and we have 10 within an hour of the Salt Lake City Airport. And one one of those 10 is Deer Valley Resort, which is one of the highest ranked in terms of high-end luxury resorts right here in the great state of Utah. So the next one on the list of pros for Utah is Moab. Moab, Utah is beautiful. It has red rocks and uh, the big national arch that you see everywhere. That's in Moab and it's only a few hours drive from Salt Lake. So it's a great way to get out, see the city. And Moab has the Jeep crawls where people will go off-roading in their Jeeps or in their four by fours. And there's a lot of area and land to explore. And with Moab, there's a lot of movies that are filmed there because it looks cool and it's different than any type of texture or area you've seen before. The next one on the list, number three, is we have five national parks, which in the terms of national parks, California has the most, Alaska has the second most, little old Utah has five national parks that are all beautiful and all diverse and great for day trips. Because of the size of Utah, you can get down to St. George within about four to five hours. So you have plenty of day trip opportunity and there's plenty of hotels to stop and explore the national parks. Number four on my list is hiking. We have mountains, 360 view of mountains, and there are plenty of trails to hike and check out. One of my favorite hikes here in Utah is the Mount Tipanogos Trail, and there's two ways to do it, but it is one of the higher mountains in Utah County, and you can climb up it late at night. It's not too hard. I was able to do it even as an eight-year-old child. It does take all day, but it's a great way to get out, see the mountains, see the valleys, and it's a really fun hike. Number five on my list is our Salt Lake City International Airport. We are lucky enough to have Delta as one of the major hub stops here in Utah, which allows us for fairly affordable international flights and fairly affordable ways to get in and out of Utah. As one of the bigger hubs, it allows us to get to New York or LA fairly easily. A great thing about our airport is they're revamping it, rebuilding it, and they're building it out even better. And it's only 10 minutes away from downtown, and we have have a track system that you can get from the airport to downtown Salt Lake in about 20 minutes. And if you're driving, it's only 10. Number six on the list is Sundance, and I'm talking about the Sundance Film Festival. The Sundance Film Festival was brought in by Robert Redford, and this is where we showcase amazing films that are brought in indie films. We get movie stars that come to see the films and it's a great way in the community. We have a great arts community built around the Sundance Film Festival and it showcases some of the best and fun movies in the state. Number seven on my list is Park City. Park City is known to be a retreat for the millionaires that come in from our international airport just an hour away that they're able to get in, enjoy the city, enjoy the skiing, and there's a lot of ski resorts in Park City. It's one of our little stay vacations when we wanna get away, go out of town. It's only about a half hour from where we live and it allows us to go and enjoy high-end restaurants, high-end shopping, and it's a great little vacation area. Number eight, we have a lot of college options when it comes to higher education and our workforce is very educated. There are nine schools that I can think of off the top of my head. So lots of options for schooling, lots of affordability and great world-class schools. Number nine on the list is a family environment. Utah is known for larger families. With that, the community is fairly accommodating. What I mean by that is when you go to a restaurant, there's gonna be changing tables, there's gonna be high chairs. And in general, the community itself is very familiar with kids and very comfortable having kids around. So you're not gonna get that stare down where they're like, oh, take care of your kid because everyone has kids and everyone has a lot of kids. So it's a lot of fun, lots of activities, lots of great schools that allow you to live and thrive living in Utah. And number 10 on the list is beautiful views. We have mountains that are majestic and beautiful and you can see them everywhere you go in Utah. In Northern Utah, we have the mountains. In Southern Utah, we have the Red Rocks and the national parks and Utah itself is just a very pretty state. Now there are tumbleweeds. We'll get to that in the cons. Before I jump into the cons list, make sure you are liking and subscribing these videos so you can find out everything about Utah and get updated on what's going on here in this great state. So now we are to the 10 cons of living in Utah. 
in no particular order. The first one is lack of high-end restaurants. If you are coming from a bigger metro area, we really don't have a ton of high-end restaurants for your dining pleasure. Uh, if you're gonna want, if you want a Michelin star restaurant, you're gonna have to get on a plane to go find a restaurant. We do have restaurants and we have chains, but we don't have a lot of high-end restaurants. The next one on the list, number two, is lack of a nightlife. Utah is not known for its nightlife and we just recently host the All-Star Games and everyone said everything closed down at midnight, we couldn't really keep partying through the night, which in Utah we just don't have a ton of opportunities for clubs and bars if you're gonna go out and explore the nightlife. We do have options in Salt Lake, it's not that we have none, but there's just not as many as you would get in LA. Number three on the list is there is a fairly predominant religion in the state, and if you're not part of that religion, you might feel a little ostracized. Now, the LDS culture is known for being kind and inviting and nice, but sometimes people have had bad experiences that they don't feel comfortable around the LDS population, and it is a fairly high percentage of the population here in Utah. Number four on the list is inversion. If you are gonna live in the Salt Lake County or Utah County, there is something called inversion. And what it is is because of those beautiful mountains, smog and smoke will come into the valley and it'll get trapped under the cold and heat. The ground gets really cold, the smog gets close to it, and then it gets trapped and it's not pretty in the winter months. The good news, about it is if you are just on the other side of the Wasatch Mountains in Park City or Camas or Heber, you're not gonna experience that. So it's not great for people with asthma and it does happen usually in the winter months. Number five, if you've been following me for very long, you know it's my favorite con, it's I-15. Because we only have one north to south to get through Utah and if it's congested, it's rough. If you are at the point of the mountain going from Utah County to Salt Lake County, there really is only four roads to get into Salt Lake. You have Redwood Road, I-15, the Little Frontage Road, and going up over Suncrest. So not great options when there is traffic. Now there are other ways where you could go around through Tooele or around through Heber, but that's gonna be a very long detour. So getting north to south, we only have one freeway, not a lot of options. And getting east to west in Utah County is really rough. There's not very many highways and no freeways. And Salt Lake does have the Belt Route and I-80, which allow a little more east to west traffic, but it's still not great. The state knows this is a problem with our continual growth year after year, and they are working on it and they have bonds in place, but our traffic is a little rough. Now it's not stop and go bumper to bumper LA, Florida traffic, but when there's an accident, it's really hard to get around. Number six on the list is weather. Now with that world-class skiing comes some weather issues. We have great snow and then it'll warm up and it's feeling great and then it'll dump on you again. Or it'll do that in the spring, summer. We never really know when snow's gonna end. Sometimes it'll snow clear until April. Sometimes it won't snow at all. So it's hard to predict and everyone forgets how to drive when it first snows. And then in the summer, it does get really hot, especially in Southern Utah. We have similar weather to what Arizona has in Southern Utah. So there are pools and there's ACs, but we do get pretty hot because we are actually a desert here in Utah. So it, the weather is, we do have four seasons. So that's nice. You experience spring, fall, winter, summer, but you also get the extremes of those four seasons. Number seven on the list is lack of high-end shopping. So if you want an Hermes store, you're gonna have to get on an airplane and fly to Las Vegas, or you're gonna have to fly to Dallas because we don't have any high-end shopping. We don't have Neiman Marcus. Uh, we have stuff, but not as high-end. We did just get a Tiffany's and a Louis Vuitton. So we're getting there. We're just not there yet. Number eight on the list is lakes. Now we have some beautiful lakes for views, but they're not great for recreational use. We have Utah Lake, Salt Lake, and Deer Creek. Deer Creek is beautiful and it's man-made and it is freezing. So if you're gonna go on it, you're gonna want wetsuits and it's fairly congested because it's probably the best of the lakes. Utah Lake is very shallow and kind of dirty. So it's not one that a lot of people will use. I grew up on it, I've used it. It's a good lake, but it's, a little dirty. And then the Great Salt Lake is not for boating because it is a salt lake. We do have Bear Lake, which is in North Utah, and it is beautiful and it is deep and it is cold. So we do have lake options, but they're not the best. Number nine on my list is Utah is known for being cheap. 
So people with their larger families, with affordability being a problem because of the mountains and lakes, we don't have a lot of buildable land. We are very frugal and cheap and we spend money on necessities, services. It kind of depends on what we're spending, but they're known for being fairly cheap, uh, trying to save a, save a dollar, trying to make things work, make ends meet. So just know going into it, there's some perceived frugality. So if you are in a service-based industry, be prepared for conversations around costs. And the last one, number 10 on the list is coffee shops. The predominant religion of the LDS culture does not drink coffee. Some do, some don't. Uh, but because of that, the coffee shop environment has not really developed in Utah and there's not a great amount of local coffee shops. There are Starbucks. There is Dutch Bros, but in the grand scheme of it, there's not a lot of options when it comes to drinking coffee. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about Utah and you want to learn more specifics about cities and neighborhoods, make sure you follow along. We have done every city in Salt Lake and Utah County, and we're doing neighborhood tours every week.